for watching. Yeah. So while I've been working on this project here, one of my good friends, uh, we were great friends from back when I was in college. We did some filming together back then and some crazy stuff. But anyway, he's been working on building his own ultimate adventure rig and it looks amazing. I've only seen pictures, so today's the first time I'm gonna see it and I want to bring you guys along because I think you guys are really gonna like his awesome Basically homemade overlander rig. All right, what's up everybody? My name's Andrew Muse, and I just spent the last year building this crazy expedition vehicle behind me. Um, we worked out of a friend's garage and built this thing from the ground up. Basically, we took a 2004 uh, Ford F550 four wheel drive with 100,000 miles on it. We pulled the bed off of it, which is like a, a tool bed with uh, you know, a, a lift gate. So it was a pretty heavy uh, lift gate. Bought the truck for 13 sold the bed off of it for two so in the truck alone about 11 our goal was to create an earth roamer concept for 30 grand um which we got close to an earth roamer but we definitely exceeded our budget but we'll get into that in a minute um we upgraded the suspension and the tires to these 41 continental tires a little bit of a lift to accommodate the larger wheels we also had to cut back the fender flares go to buck stop bumper all baja design lights with the worn winch and uh yeah this this thing lights up the the night sky when we when we fire them all up so here on the sides we've got some of these custom um underbelly storage boxes that we had made by Vorshear. These turned out really nice. The idea for this one is to have a slide out propane grill so we can have it sort of underneath our like main area. This one should accommodate our kind of base camp setup. So our ladder, um, some lawn chairs, you know, just sort of immediate base camp necessities out of this one. Uh, that's okay. Nice and big again, really deep. And we had this custom bumper made from Borshear as well. And these back boxes, which I'm really excited about. So they pop up, they're in gas struts, they're full of tools right now, but this one will have our uh, generator and propane tanks. Sorry about the wind where it's so cold out right now. So we don't have a ladder yet. So right now we're just uh, making some V1 climbing moves and uh, We'll have a small ladder, but yeah, this is the interior. Still not quite finished yet, but we still have, uh, we're getting close. As far as the wall construction, we used half inch HDO, two inch foam board, half inch HDO, laminated and sandwiched together. Then we just cut out all the, the doors and the holes. Um, start with the back here. We sort of have his and hers storage. So we've got these, you know, closet space and these slide out drawers. These will all be on these kind of locking um, latches here. We go all the way down both sides. Then we have our bathroom, which actually just got pretty much finished today. We still don't have a door. We're gonna have some sort of like frosted glass or acrylic door here with a cassette toilet, which is super nice because you poop into like a little cassette thing and it slides out the side of the vehicle. No real mess. This will also be a shower. So we'll have a full wet bath going on in here. Then we have our Domatic three-way refrigerator. This can run off of AC, DC, and propane. Also has a freezer compartment, which is pretty rad, but it's removable in case you don't have things that we want to freeze. You can just have a full kind of just refrigerator space. Um, plan is to have, you know, dry storage up here, kind of dry food storage down here. This is a big thing that slides out, but the cassette's in there. So uh, no one's pooped in it yet, thankfully, but it's just kind of temporary storage. In here we have our furnace, um, of course all this is additional storage, so furnace and dog food at the moment, but this will all be optimized. We haven't, as you can tell, obviously don't quite live in this full time yet, but uh, that's all kind of coming together. We have our dinette table, should be able to seat about three to four people here comfortably. This will drop into a bed if we decide we want that. Um, it's pretty small, so it's not really great sleeping scenario. We ended up losing inches in wall construction. So my overall vision for this space kind of got smaller and smaller as time went on. Um, 
in this bay here. Pay no attention to the giant hole that we haven't uh, sorted out yet. We have all of our electrical. So we have um, 375 watt panels on the roof. This is also charged by an alternator or uh, shore power. It just kind of depends on what power source we have for the day. We have Lion Energy batteries. These are lithium ion batteries. They're super nice. They're like 25% the weight of lead acid batteries and they can also be drained to the very, you know, to zero without causing issues. So we're, we're pretty excited about our whole electrical setup. We had Camper Repair Dice help us out with that. Just getting everything to talk to each other nicely and not fry. Um, it was nice to have an expert kind of help do that because the rest of this is just a hack job. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we have uh, a full-size queen bed. I'm pretty short. I'm much shorter than Eli holding the camera. If you guys know Eli, he's, he's tall. So our plan is probably to shorten the bed just a little bit to add some storage space at our feet, some sort of foot locker. And this is going to be my main desk. I do a ton of video editing. I do a lot of action sports, adventure, travel. I run a series called Tiny Home Adventure. So check it out, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Um, so I'll be spending way too much time here, unfortunately. Then we have a propane stove, three burner stove with a oven as well for them hot pockets. Um, and then we have a nice deep sink. I really love how this all turned out. We used uh, Red Point Woodworks down, uh, down in Utah for these, uh, raw slabs. They turned out so nice. It was really fun. I got to go down there and help them like plane them and, uh, and stain and everything. So these turned out really sick. Our, um, lights are on three different zones. So we have under the cabinets, we have the main cabin, and then we have the bed. They're also all in dimmers, which typically doesn't look good on a camera. But to the human eye, it's a really nice kind of uh, So we have this Dometic Penguin 2 AC unit. Um, we could possibly run it off our batteries, but it's a really bad idea. So that will only be when we're hooked up to shore power or running the generator. And we also have these uh, fantastic roof vents. These are sick. They're off of a little remote. They can either intake or outtake. I don't know what the word is, but you know what I'm talking about different speeds and you can also get them so they're cross ventilating. So this one could be pulling air, that one could be pushing air and you can really get a nice breeze through here. Also, one of my favorite parts about this rig is the windows, um, the nice awning style. So if it is raining or in this case snowing, you can kind of just open it up and we kind of built it. So it's, this is what I wanted right here. This, this whole vibe. Be able to like hang out the window, see the dog playing, and uh, wake up in the morning, get after it, sort of the goal. So we did a pass through. This was kind of the critical thing for me. I really wanted this. I've lived in truck campers, I've lived in cars, I've lived in vans, and this pass through was a big deal for me. My kind of inner circle of friends that had been advising me on this, you know, my girlfriend, my friend who's an engineer, and then the friend's shop who I worked out of, all kind of told me I shouldn't do it because we thought it was going to be harder than it seemed like everything this project, everything this project was really hard. And this seemed like it was going to be one of the hardest things. It was actually one of the easiest. Basically, we just got some accordion boot, which is this rubber gasket that um, just seats onto basically what we did is we took two pieces of aluminum, cut out matching holes, pasted one to the truck, not pasted, but we riveted one to the truck and, you know, uh, sealed it and then we attached that the sister piece to the box itself so that the truck can articulate independent of the box because that's the biggest thing um, the suspension underneath this actually flexes as well so we had to accommodate that with these mounting knuckles that can sort of hinge but we also needed to make sure that if we attached both the cab of the truck and the house that they didn't rip each other apart Hence the accordion boot and that separation. Come on, you ready? You load up. Oh, get up there, big dog. So yeah, if you're interested, we'd love it. If you'd follow along on our journey, we do a bunch of cool content. You can follow us on Instagram at Andrew underscore underscore Muse. Follow us on YouTube at, I think just Andrew Muse. 
You can also follow Kicker if you want, Kicker Dog Views, but that's totally up to you. We are planning some super big adventures. We're going to be documenting the whole thing, um, you know, everything along the way. So, yeah, tune in. Thanks for watching. A little pup named Kicker Dog came into my life after I almost lost it all. Watch as we take this badass adventure van on the road trip of a lifetime. There were highs and there were lows. We pushed our limits, learned a lot, and met some incredible people along the way. But above all else, we had fun. Welcome to Season 2 of the Tiny Home Adventure.